What's up everyone, Takedown here, back with another video. As I've explained before, I'm currently trying to get into Canada's border. I've recently submitted my application, and right now, I'm basically waiting to get selected for their selection process. So, what that means is, whenever I get selected for their selection process, I'm going to have to start running around and basically going for things like interviews and stress tests and other things like that. Whenever they tell me to go, wherever they tell me to go. It's a lot of running around, and one thing that is required before you start the training part of CBSA or RCMP, and it's not included in their selection process, is you have to go and take their non-restricted and restricted firearms safety course. At the end of this course, you will have your firearms unrestricted and restricted license. Now for me, I have decided instead of me waiting to get selected for the selection process, because once selected for that, you're going to have to do a lot of running around whenever they tell you to, and I might not have time to actually go and do this course. I decided to go ahead and get it done now instead of waiting until I'm extremely busy whenever I'm in the selection process. Now it is a requirement for CBSA and RCMP before you go and start the training within those programs, but other law enforcements also use the same course, it's just some of them include it in their course material whenever you're doing the training. Now for me, getting into CBSA Canada's Border, it does make sense why you need both the non-restricted and restricted. For non-restricted, it is firearms like rifles and shotguns, and restricted is things like pistols. So for non-restricted, things like shotguns and rifles, the reason why you need to know that is whenever hunters cross the border to go hunting, you need to know a little bit of information on what is allowed to come over the border. You need to know what ammo they're allowed to bring, so you have to know how to identify which ammo goes with which guns. And you also need to know how to handle these weapons because when you're looking at them, you have to handle them the right way. And the reason why you need restricted is because as a CBSA agent, you are going to have a handgun on you at all times and you need to know how to use it in case there ever is a time that you need to use it. So this past weekend, I have taken both the non-restricted and restricted course. So I'm basically going to give you guys some information on what is in each course in case you've never handled guns or never been around guns in your entire life like me. Going into this course, I've never even touched a gun before. I didn't know much knowledge about guns. And this course for me gave me a lot of information. I now know a lot about guns where I didn't know anything before. And I know how to handle them a little bit better. So for me, when I took this course, I did take it locally. And this guy had six people max is what he's allowed to teach. Other places that you go, if it's a company that is teaching the course, you might have 10, 15, 20, or sometimes even more. For me, I learn better in smaller groups, so whenever you're registering to get your non-restricted and restricted, if you prefer smaller groups, just check with different instructors that are in your area or closest to you to see what size groups of the classroom that they teach in. So for me, I went to the one that was closest to me and they only had, he had a max of six people in the class. For me, that means I get to learn a little bit more. I can follow along a lot more and if I have any questions, it's easier to get them answered. So for me, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday that I had to go and take my course. It was four hours on Friday, four hours on Saturday, and then the final exam and the practical, which is when you're handling the guns. And then on Sunday, it was about six hours of course material, and then your exam and then your practical, which is handling the guns. The main piece of advice that I would say whenever you're taking this course is just listen to the instructor. And if you have any questions, ask them right then and there. Whenever you start your exam or practical, they cannot tell you anything, and that means that you might get a zero or lose points if you do not know the right answers. So basically, just follow along with the course material, everything that he's telling you, and if you have any questions, just ask them right away, just so you don't forget, and in case they're part of the exam or practical. Now, if there is anything that is part of the test, depending on your instructor, usually they tell you, Make sure you guys remember this because it is part of your exam. You are going to have to have this for your practical or they'll tell you something like that. You'll need to know this is basically what they will tell you. So if you hear the instructor telling you that and you didn't really follow along, you don't know what they said, just ask them to repeat it because it is going to be on the exam. Now for me, the course was extremely boring, but the reason for that is the instructor that I had likes to tell the history about guns, all the guns that he's had, how many years that he's been shooting for, all the stories that he's had about guns over his years. This guy was 70 years old, the guy that I went to. So my instructor knew it all and he had so many stories and it was basically a gun history class, which wasn't in any of the course material and it wasn't on the exams or the practical. So you still have to follow along and basically know a lot of the information, but it makes for a really long day if they're telling you the history about the guns. 
Now for the exam, it is pretty easy, I will say that. For my exams and practicals for both non-restricted and restricted, I got over 90 for everything. So it is a really easy test pretty much, but it will freak you out whenever you get it and whenever you start taking it. It is 50 questions, a combination of multiple choice and true or false. And some of the questions they do try to trick you and it does have it worded a little bit differently. So I would recommend reading each question carefully. If you do not know what something means, the instructor can tell you, they just can't tell you the answer to the question. And also, once you finish your test, I would recommend going back through it and going question to question and making sure that you chose the right answer. Just go back through and change any answers that you think need to be changed. Now, whenever it comes to the practical, before you actually do the practical, which the practical is you handling the guns. Now, before you do your exam for that portion, usually the instructor, especially if you've never handled guns before, will walk you through and show you himself how to do everything for each of the guns. There are six guns that you have to do it for, for the non-restricted. After he shows you what to do, he will have you handle the guns and he will walk you through each step. You will have to perform the acts prove, which I'm not gonna explain that in this video. You will learn that in the course. It is pretty simple stuff, but you will have to do that safely and you'll have to do it to each gun before you do your exam. So he's basically walking you through each thing that you have to do. And during the exam, he's not gonna tell you what to do. He's just gonna give you the orders on when to do them. So you're gonna have to remember each step on your own. The one thing I will say for your practical is, number one, just take your time. It's not a timed exam. So if you forget something or you can't remember it, just take your time, wait a minute, and just think about it before doing anything with the gun. The other thing that I want to say is your muzzle direction. Do not aim it at the instructor. That is an immediate fail. I shouldn't have to say this, and you might think it's funny, but a lot of people fail whenever they do this because they don't think they're even doing it, especially if you never handled the gun before. You might not have even thought that you actually just done that. Usually the instructor will say where you can point your gun, just make sure you point it there. And if you're not sure where to point your gun, just keep the muzzle on the end of the table. If you do not move it from the end of the table, then you cannot move it out of range of when he told you to put it. And for restricted, the exam is still 50 questions, a combination of multiple choice and true and false. It's pretty easy. I got over 90 for that for restricted as well. And for the practical, you are gonna have a single action, a double action and a semi-automatic. Uh, pistol that you're going to be handling. So again, the instructor is going to show you early during the course of how to do each step. And then you're going to be practicing on each of these three guns and he's going to walk you through everything on how to do the axe prove on them. And then for your exam, you're going to have to do them. So he's basically going to give you the order. You're going to have to remember every step for each of these guns on what to do. Now, honestly, the pistols for me on what you have to do to them was way easier than the rifles and shotguns. However, the one thing I will stress is your muzzle direction. For me, I have a tendency of whenever you have to check the barrel to see which ammo it takes, I was turning it like this and looking at it. That was making me fail. That's where I was losing points for that. I still got nine over 90, but by tilting it like that, it is out of range. Now for your pistol, he does make the range of where you can point your gun very small. So just tilt it sideways like this. Always keep your muzzle on the table at all times. That's one thing I'd recommend. And try not to move or pivot it at all because that will make you lose points and your instructor will yell at you. Now for me, when the instructor was yelling whenever I was doing this and turning it, I honestly didn't think I did nothing wrong. I do understand what I did wrong, but at the time I didn't think I did anything wrong. So when the instructor yells at you, you might feel the same way. You might think that you did nothing wrong, but by tilting it like that, it does go past where he told you you can point it. So there are small things like that you have to remember. The other thing I will mention is if it is your first time handling a weapon, just try to stay calm. I know it can be make it can make you a little bit nervous if it is your first time handling a weapon. All I would do is Listen to the instructor, watch him uh, whenever he's handling the firearms, and then whenever he's walking you through how to handle the firearms whenever you are handling them in the practice, ask as many questions as you can. And just try to remain calm. It is pretty easy. You do need to pass your exam and your practical for unrestricted and the exam and practical for restricted. However, if you do fail either your written test, your written exam, or the practical, all you have to do would be is to come back the next time that instructor is doing the course. And all you have to do is write the exam or do the practical. You don't have to stay through the whole course unless you need to remember more stuff. If you need more detail, then maybe you will have to take the entire course again. But if you just need to do the practical, if it was small stuff like your uh, muzzle direction and small stuff like that that you forgot to do, 
or you're nervous with because it's your first time handling guns, you can come back to do just that part if you do need to. Now, once you do pass, what the instructor will do is he's gonna send, if you're getting both unrestricted and restricted, he's gonna send two copies away just basically to get stamped and then they're gonna get sent back to you. Once you get them, at the end of your course, he gives you a form to fill out. It's a pretty long form and he'll explain what to check off on which for depending on which course you took. If you took just unrestricted, he'll tell you what to do. Or if you took restricted, he'll tell you what to do. With that, if you're just getting unrestricted, you also have to send a check or money order or anything else. It, it lists what other options you could do of $60. And you also, or if you're getting unrestricted and restricted, it's $80. So once you get back what he sends away, once that's mailed back to you, you'll mail a copy of both your unrestricted and your restricted forms, the ones that he that you get back in the mail. You'll send the form, you'll send your check of $60 or $80, depending on which course uh, you are taking. If you're taking both, it's $80. And you have to take, uh, you have to send a photo of yourself, and you'll mail that to what is on the form. It'll say where to send it to. And that will basically get your license in process. It takes about 90 days to get your actual license in the mail. And on the back of it, if you're getting both unrestricted and restricted, it will both say that you can own and possess unrestricted and restricted firearms. It's your PAL basically means that you're allowed to purchase firearms and you're allowed to have firearms yourself. You will have to wait the 90 days, but once you get your actual license, that means you can go and purchase a firearm if you want to do that. Now, if you plan on getting a restricted firearm, such as a pistol, you will need to get an ATT, I believe that's called. And basically, you will have to be a member of a local firearm club or shooting range or something like that that is closest to you or any in general. I don't think it has to be the closest one to you anymore. And that getting that form, once you uh, are a member of a fire range, that form is basically allows you to transport your pistol from your house to the firing range and that's good for three years it's way better than the old uh, format way back I think it was before 98 I might be wrong on the year but back then doesn't matter what kind of gun you had whenever you wanted to leave your house with it to go to a firing range you had to call that day and if that's uh, there's a per specific person at each police station that is part of that or that you have to call a specific person that if he wasn't there you were out of luck you couldn't go to the fire range that day and basically you had to take the fastest routes to the firing range. So with this, it doesn't matter as long as you have it with you, you will have to have your license and your pistol registration, but that's all you basically need. The reason why I want to mention the ATT in that form there is if you are going into Canada's border like myself, you do not need an ATT because you're going to be taking your pistol, your firearm from your home to work so you don't need that that's included with your canada's border uh, everything that's to do with that because they know you're an agent you're allowed to transport it from home to work so you do not need an att for that you do need an att even if you are a cbsa agent if you own your own personal pistol and you plan on going to a shooting range with it that's when you will need an att att but you do not need one uh if you're just using your work pistol and bringing it home. Now, sometimes you won't even be bringing it home. Some uh, border or CBSA places will have a spot designated for you. So it'll be a uh, locker or a vault or something like that, where you put your firearm at the end of your shift. Uh, some of them don't even allow you to bring it home now, but I did want to mention that. So this is basically what to expect whenever you're going for your unrestricted and res unrestricted or restricted firearms safety course. It's not you shooting the gun. It's basically a safety course so you know how to handle the guns and everything you need to know and how to unload and load your weapons. And also uh, some of the information, especially if you're going into CBSA on what guns can do which ammo, what all, or all the types of ammo, stuff like that. It's a pretty easy course. You just basically have to pay attention. So I would recommend just following the instructor listening as much as you can, especially if you have an instructor like I did that gives you a lot of uh, the history behind guns and gives you a lot of stories that he's had personally. It can be extremely boring, but you still have to listen and pay attention because he throws in a lot of the important information that are on the exam and practical while he's going on about all that stuff. So if you have any questions during your course, ask as much as you can and 
The test and practical are extremely easy. So these are just some of the tips I would recommend after me taking it. Like I said, I just took it this weekend. So I am gonna leave this video here. I hope this has helped somebody at least feel a little bit more comfortable before they go and take their unrestricted or restricted firearm safety course. That was the goal of this video. But I am gonna leave this video here. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.